Mr. Chairman. Um, kind of building on where the Senator Capito was going there, I guess I just heard there, there was not an incident that triggered these, these uh, additional regulations. Is that right, uh, Mr. Cornsey? That's correct. Right. Um, and furthermore, I've just heard that states like Wyoming, Colorado, uh, I know there are others are actually ahead in terms of their systems processes and so forth than even the BLM processes. Is that correct? In some cases, that's true. Um, you know, we in Montana updated our hydraulic fracturing rules in 2011. In fact, we have some of the most robust chemical disclosure rules in the country. What would I tell a Montanan right now to say that uh, why the federal government knows better than we in the state? What, what do I tell a Montana right now uh, when we have state-of-the-art regulations in place and it's working beautifully? We've got to drink the water, breathe the air, recreate uh, in these lands. It's close to us. We want to preserve and protect it. What do I tell a Montana around why the BLM come in and tell us a better way to do it? So without knowing the, I mean, we would want to sit down and look side by side in terms of if there are differences. My guess would be if you do have one of the most forward-leaning disclosure rules in the country, that our rule will not change the standards that you have to follow. So I think what you would tell a Montanan is the federal government, which has responsibility to a nationwide regulated community, to all Americans, has made sure that the standards we have, uh, that there's a similar standard nationwide to what we've done in Montana. So we in Montana can be proud that but we But they're also, either. they're also, we pay a lot of federal taxes as well. I think they'd ask themselves, what are we getting for our return on investment of having federal hours and tax dollars spent with the redundancy, arguably putting regulations in place that are even backward looking versus states that really have forward looking and state of the art regs? Well, I think it's, it's important to understand how oil and gas regulation has worked. So this goes back to the states and the federal government working together. So I think the gentleman from Wyoming said, you know, that has not been the case in hydraulic fracturing because BLM has not had a uh, modern rule. We had one in the early 1980s, but it had to be revised to sort of catch up to modern practice, which is what we've done. But in all other areas, I mean, it's, since 1981, the Bureau of Land Management has updated 37 different oil and gas regulations, right? So to us, updating and in a dance on this nationwide scale with states is nothing new. Some states are ahead of us. Some states are behind us. And this, this is how the process has rolled forward. Yeah, well, I, but, I, I, but I think for your Montana, right. you can say, you know, look, this is, not a, this is not an onerous rule. This is a common sense rule that dovetails well with what we have and should Well, well I can tell you, most Montanans, when the federal government comes and says, this is not going to be an onerous rule, we don't believe it, yeah. uh, just based on our experience. Um, and I guess this really leads me to another uh, question, which is, Looking at just geological differences and so forth here across the country as we look at hydraulic fracturing, can you help me understand the thought process of BLM when this rule is designed without application to legacy shallow gas wells in conventional fields? Can you restate the question? So it was the, the rule did not take into account the application to legacy shallow gas wells in conventional fields? Well, anyone that drills a well after you know, June 24th, I believe the day is, you know, we'll have to follow this if they're using hydraulic fracturing. So it, so it applies shallow... I, I, I thought there was an exception for the rule for shallow gas wells. I mean, not that I'm aware of. If I'm incorrect, I'll, I'll come back to you on Okay, that. because more than half the wells in Montana will need exceptions to that rule. So I'm just concerned, and this approach is a one-size-fits-all, when clearly, uh, it's looking at geology, there's a lot of difference between deep and, and, and shallow wells. Um, how many years has the BLM been working on this rule? Uh, I believe, well, uh, Secretary Salazar held a forum in, uh, I believe it was October of 2010, October and, or November. And so it's been about, about, five, about years, five years, roughly. Yeah. Now, I'm understanding the rule it needs to be implemented uh, really less than 90 days after it was released in March. Is that correct? That's true. And... And by law, we're only required 60 days. We extended 30 additional days because we are doing outreach with industry and with states and making sure that we have more time. Yeah, if it was a five-year process to develop the rule, is there a reason you're only giving the states less than 90 days to, uh, for enforceability? Well, I'll tell you, throughout this process, I'm proud of the re outreach that we've done and the coordination with states. I've spent time in Denver sitting down with the state of Wyoming's regulators, the state of Colorado's regulators, with Utah, with tribes. I've gone to the 
uh, you have gone to reservations in North Dakota to sit down with tribal members and tribal regulators to understand what, how they're approaching this. So I think we've been robust in our engagement. And so we have had, we actually took the unusual step of having two different draft rules. So we had one in 2012 and I believe one right, in 2013. But, still, it's, it, but the states will have less than 90 days before they must uh, enforce rules, is that right? And I appreciate you trying to give me to yeah. find a question, right. answer. But so the point is we have had a, a long collaborative conversation on this. And so there shouldn't be any surprises. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Uh, thank you, Senator Dane. Senator Lee. 